Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Jung Young Eun. This is the case discussion to share the clinical difficulties and find the best solutions. We have three masters, Dr. Kim Ki Sung, Dr. Yang Seung Min, and Dr. Son Young. Hello. We will look at issues to be discussed. On the right of the video player, there is a real-time chatting window for you to post the questions to us and share comments regarding the topics of discussion. Today's case, 48-year-old female patient, mobility and discomfort of number 37. It is very close to mandible canal, thus immediate implant placement after extraction may not be right. Do I need to do socket preservation first and place an implant later? Understand the socket preservation can be done with the various graft materials and membrane. Are there any differences between the graft materials and which one is the best? So that is the question. On the CT and panorama, there's periapical lesion at the root of 36, right above the canal. Usually, socket preservation is to preserve the soft tissue and the alveolar ridge after extraction. Do you do socket preservation quite a lot? Yes, I do a lot. In my case, I don't really do it. I'll explain later. I'm in the middle. It depends on a case. I don't always do it. So I believe you will explain further later. Yes, I think our masters have their preferred technique of socket preservation. I would like to ask our masters to explain with their own cases, similar cases to the case under discussion. Dr. Son Young-hui? I do socket preservation quite often, so I will explain with my cases. Socket preservation, there are broadly two. First, by graft material that go into the socket, it can be allogenic bone, xenogenic bone, and these days, collagen block is used a lot. So, xenogenic bone with collagen block, ultimately, the bone quality would be better with allogenic bone, but after all the remodeling is finished over a long period of time, the three bone materials achieve similar bone quality. That's what I think recently. In the past, I absolutely believed allogenic bone was better, but now I believe they don't really make big differences. Depending on the socket situation, we need to select the different graft materials. Second, depending on what type of membrane can be used, they can be classified. Collagen membrane and uh, non-resorbable PTFE membrane can be used for the socket preservation. First, uh, if you use a PTFE non-resorbable membrane, you need to remove it. I have a similar case. Number 37 was quite mobile and the alveolar bone was resorbed. Thus, it was extracted. And the granulation tissue was thoroughly removed. I use a porcine bone and the site is covered with the PTFE membrane and it was sutured. If you think you have to do socket preservation here, you need to be careful. The curatage should be done thoroughly within the socket. During the healing period, the bone would be remodeled. Therefore, when you do the grafting, you need to do it a little excessively. So a little over grafting is required, but not so much excessively. 
Most importantly, when you do the suturing, cross matrix suture would be used. Figure of eight is okay, or crisscross suture. These days, it is trended to use hidden X. They are basically the same. So whatever suture you may use, the clinical outcome would be the same. But uh, you shouldn't suture tensely like gingiva is bleached. So the suture should be tension free. So I do it like this. When the socket is sound and there's no defect, I use allergenic material. And when the socket is pathologic and there is a defect, I use a xenograft. If you follow this principle, I don't think you will have um, a big uh, problem. When you do the socket preservation, you need to remember the purpose of doing socket preservation. The first the primary purpose is to preserve the soft tissue appearance surrounding the uh, socket. You need to keep in mind that the primary pur purpose is not bone regeneration. Bone regeneration is secondary. PTFE membrane can be used in the socket preservation. Uh, it is stitched out post-op one week and post-op four week. It is contaminated like that. You can remove it with a pincet. Under that, you see something like a granulation tissue, but it is called pseudoperiosteum. Keratinization will proceed post of four months. You can see the gingiva like that. Re-entry is made to place an implant post to four to five months. The bone quality, I've never had any case when the implants could not be placed because of poor bone quality. I think it would be the same even without grafting. I believe the purpose of socket preservation is to preserve the appearance of soft tissue. Implants are placed uh, post of four to five months. Prosthesis is delivered. This is the case with the PTFE membrane. I have a special case with the collagen membrane. Number 26 has a severe root carious and the bone is severely resorbed. So it was planned to be extracted. AO's collagen block launched by Austin recently is used for the socket preservation according to the root coverture of maxillary number six. It was cut, it would be cut easier if it is hydrated. After extraction, according to the architecture of the socket, grafting is done. It is covered with the collagen membrane and sutured. As you can see, after suturing, the gingiva whitened. You shouldn't make something like that. Post up one week, four months, it shows the similar outcome, whether you use collagen membrane or non-resorbable membrane, the ultimate outcome is the same. However, there's a, some difference between them. I'll talk about it later. After the healing, one guide is used for the flapless surgery to place an implant. The rest of them is the standard procedure. Prosthesis. So, Socket preservation is done like this, expecting this type of outcome. This is a little bit different cases. When a soft tissue cannot cover the site of the implant placement, here mucograft is used after implants are placed and uh, soft tissue cannot cover the site. Mucograft is a specialized for this is a collagen membrane used in place of CTG. Over time, the soft tissue is healed. 
Compared to PTFE membrane, collagen has better biocompatibility, so the gingiva healing is much better. At the bottom, immediately implant is placed after extraction, whether there is a dead space, PTFE membrane is used with the open membrane technique. Over time, keratinization is progressing, so the result is the same. Therefore, it can be used like this at the time of implant placement. In summary, graft materials do not make a big difference. I think so these days. Collagen membrane versus non-resorbable membrane. The outcome is the same, but the healing mechanism is different. With the collagen membrane, over the membrane, soft tissue fills up to achieve the primary closure. With the PTFE membrane, pseudoperiosteum is generated below the membrane. After the membrane is removed, it fuses with the oral epithelium for the healing. So their healing mechanism is different. In terms of the soft tissue architecture, both of them have good architecture. However, the soft tissue thickness after healing, collagen resorbable membrane shows thicker soft tissue compared to the non-resorbable membrane. In terms of the regenerated bone quality, I believe compared to collagen membrane, non-resorbable membrane shows better quality. Four months healing period for fixture installation. Is that a good period of time? When you use a collagen membrane, it's not enough. And we can see harder bone when you use non-resorbable membrane. So there are such differences, and you need to keep that in mind to approach socket preservation. Thank you. I think I talked long. I think a little bit differently from Dr. Son. It is similar, but the concept is different. The case under discussion. I don't do socket preservation in that case. If you look at the shape of the socket preservation, I want to use an analogy of water glass. If there are walls, water will fill it up. If there are walls, blood clots will fill the socket. Without the walls, it cannot be done. When there is no walls, when blood clots cannot be filling the socket, I use the socket preservation. But if you look at the case under discussion, buccal and lingual walls are intact. Initial stability cannot be gained because it is close to the canal. In that case, I wouldn't do socket preservation and I would let it heal naturally to place an implant. But the dentist who sent us the case wanted to do the socket preservation because immediate placement cannot be done. I wouldn't do that. I will show you a case. This is a little bit different from Dr. Son. Dr. Son does that to maintain the soft tissue dimension. I do it for the case where soft tissue and hard tissue dimensions need to be maintained. This is my case at that time. Um, it was a rare case, so I brought a multiple case. In March 2013, number 36 was planned to be extracted. It looks like there's uh, enough bone, and you may think uh, the socket preservation would not be necessary, but laterally it was like this. Distally, number 7 was uh, planned to be restored together. The height of number 7 is not even. The defect is concave. It's a concave bony defect. It is not good for maintaining the bone, so I try to make it flat. 
The tooth was extracted. It is not visible here, but uh, the extraction socket was cleaned and the DPT alpha membrane was inserted, which is not visible, and the DBBM is done. And primary closure was achieved to get flat ridge rather than concave ridge. So it is at the beginning and after it is healed. 5th of April extraction and it was inserted. The 27th of August, you can see the whitish incomplete osseointegrated integrated portion. If it was not there, it would be concave, but it is made into flat. Keratinized tissue zone is not sufficient, so when I removed the membrane, I did the FGG. You can see the DPTF membrane there, which is not available anymore. We don't have a stiff membrane available these days. It should be stiffer than that to keep the form so it is hard to use a resolvable membrane, but the stiffer form retaining one would be better. FGG was done and the bone is formed pretty well. When I opened it to place implants, I waited for a long time. I usually wait for six months, but due to patient's situation, I waited longer. After FGG, implants were placed and, the, and I could make a flat prosthesis. If you compare them, a little bit of flat situation was achieved. If that is necessary, then I do the socket preservation. Likewise, a patient came like this. The problem is at number 30, the existing implant and the distal hopeless tooth, so I thought it would be concave and did the same procedure. The PTFE membrane, which is widely used today, it is not stiff. When I insert it into the extraction socket, it gets crumpled. The previous one maintains its form, but this one gets crumpled, so I couldn't get what I wanted. This is when it was inserted, and some of it is exposed here. It couldn't keep the arch form, so when it is removed, it looks like this, crumpled. The previous one it's a stiff, so when it is removed, it keeps its form, but here it looks like crumpled like a piece of paper. So after some weeks, it's contaminated and removed. It's naturally healed after that. The mesial tooth was hopeless, so it looks like it is maintained, but not as much as I wanted. Maybe it was due to the membrane compared to the beginning. The bone quality may not be as good as naturally healed bone, but if you look at the height of the bone, some of it could have been maintained. So in this kind of case, I use a socket preservation. I also use a resolvable membrane too. Number 47, I don't have the CT image. It is swollen, and the chief complaint was it is mobile, and there's a no buckle wall. I use the analogy of water glass. It can be healed, but the problem is with, in that case, a resolvable membrane with DBBM is used to get the flat surface. I focus in this case. I push it toward the area there's no bone wall to create the wall. 
Over time, 7th of May, after about a month, it is improved and uh, soft tissue is properly healed after four or five months. So implant was placed. The prosthesis will be shown to you later. Professor, do you use allograft? I don't use allograft because, as I said before, I use a socket preservation in cases where there is no walls or where vertical augmentation is necessary. The bubble membrane, or as Dr. Sun said, collagen containing xenograft need to be used to give support for the wall. So that's where I use socket preservation. I use particulated, but these days I use mattress type, the block type more. In my case, I measured in prosthodontics. I have not really interested in forming bone clinically. I don't remember I did socket preservation. I thought, what had I been doing? I don't have cases, so I received some cases from Dr. Chemin Shik. What will happen if things are left alone? Actually, many dentists don't try to put something into the extraction socket in many cases, so I am busy in extracting tooth, so I have not thought about doing something to the extraction socket. Here, quadrant three teeth were extracted due to patient's situation. The patient came back in nine months and bone was formed, so implant was easily placed. In four months, implant was placed in abundant bone. One thing noticeable in this case is that the patient was a 34-year-old young man who has very good bone healing capability. A few days ago, looking at our colleagues' cases, I thought about inserting something in the socket, but eventually I decided to wait and see. I am afraid of inserting membrane into the open socket, so I tend to wait. Dr. Kim dong yeop who I respect, says in his book, if a surgeon feels comfortable with the method, it is comfortable for the patient, and as a result, it will bring good outcome. So bone grafting in the extraction socket makes sense in terms of the bone volume, but it slows down the formation of new bone. Why I haven't done it? This is number 37 case, and this is a similar case. I did nothing. 37 was extracted after three months on CT. It was not ossified. I waited a little bit longer. In five months, guided surgery was done to place an implant for initial stability. Compared to natural tooth, the bone is visually placed in the extraction socket, so implant was placed in that direction. Uh, it was a young patient, so osseointegration integration was achieved. So this is a prosthesis completed seven months post-op. Another case, I just left it alone. Implants done in another clinic failed. It was very close to the nerve. Number 46, mesial and distally, there was bone, so I waited. And the bone was forming. So, uh, Austin has short implants. I did my favorite guided surgery. I placed the implants. I should mention the brand name, but I did the bone grafting. I didn't form the bone sufficiently, so I used the short 5x5 and 4.5x7. 
implants skilled in forming bone uh, so i use short implants and put them in bone so in conclusion all but ones were connected prosthesis were completed I believe some of you are suspicious of using short implants. When short implants can be connected, they function pretty well. So this is my way of dealing with the situation instead of forming bone. This is the last third case. When patient is young, I was really surprised to see the healing capability after extraction, number 35 had bone loss, as you can see, the distal implant was used and cantilever was made. It is marvelous to see the change of tissue. At the beginning, I thought number 36 may be extracted in the future. So I was really surprised to see remarkable healing of bone and the cantilever was made for the prosthesis. Another factor is the occlusal load. Cantilever should be avoided as much as possible for implant. I thought the cantilever in the front side would be okay. But when extraction was made in quadrant one, the occlusal force was slanted in one direction, creating a problem of bone resorption like this. I checked the patient regularly, and I realized cantilever should be very carefully done. I thought if occlusal load is reduced, the bone can be formed, but it was not the case. During the waiting period, on the other side, the bone resorbed, therefore both of them were explanted and a bridge was used there. So natural healing capacity is really marvelous. But during the discussion today, I realized that I missed uh, socket preservation and uh, I am thinking about doing it in the future. Up to now, I did the procedure like this, but today I believe I need to do it down the road. Let me summarize what has been discussed. Dr. Son young hui talked about resorbable and non-resorbable membrane, the importance of it. He also talked about using them depending on situation. Professor Yang Sung min said that um, he uses the socket preservation cases selectively. And Dr. Kim Gi Sung said that he doesn't really to the socket preservation, I couldn't do it. So would you give us the closing remarks? I think I talk the most. Just like with the other treatments, socket preservation is one of many treatment modalities. Personally, to place an implant, we need to check the bed where implant will be placed. So we need to make a favorable environment for implants to be placed. Also, when an implant is loaded, we need to create good soft tissue and the bone. Socket preservation doesn't necessarily give a very nice outcome. Sometimes it creates very terrible results. However, I don't believe a certain treatment should be absolutely done, whereas others can be ignored. Depending on the situation, you need to make a decision. Socket preservation is one of uh, good treatment options. That is uh, 
how you need to approach. I have a question. In how many percent of the cases do you do socket preservation? If you extract to place an implant, 60% of the cases I place immediately, more than half of the cases, if they cannot be done, uh, I do socket preservation in 10 to 15% of the cases. I have private practice. This is a good way to keep the patient with me. Listening to the lectures and uh, doing the discussion, I thought socket preservation is for bone formation. I didn't think it is to preserve soft tissue. I will start to do it from tomorrow. Selectively, according to the criteria, I apply the socket preservation. I totally agree with the, what Dr. Kim Gi Sung said. If it is a comfortable treatment for a patient, I believe it will give good outcome of the treatment. In my case, I had cases to augment vertically. There was cases without walls. If there is very low vertical dimension, if we can raise augment two or three millimeters with the socket preservation, we can place implants. So selectively, if we can use the procedure, it would be comfortable for the patient and good for the long-term outcome. Thank you. In this case discussion, we talked about using various bone materials and the membranes for socket preservation. I would like to thank the viewers and the dentists who sent us the cases for discussion. This concludes the discussion. Thank you very much, our masters. I'm Dr. Jung Young An. I'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.